Okay, so welcome back. Uh, I'd like to welcome guest four for coming into the show and listening. Thanks a lot. Um, so the, our guest today is Melody Lee Lamb. Welcome to the show, Melody. Thank you so very much for having me. I really appreciate it. Hey, you're welcome. Um, so Melody, could you uh, tell us about yourself and what you do? Yep, I'm an artist, illustrator, and stay-at-home working mom. I paint tiny little paintings called ACEOs of animals and uh, fantasy creatures like mermaids and fairies, and I also illustrate children's books. Great. Um, and how did you get started, uh, you know, being an artist and, and getting into illustrating children's books? Um, I started creating uh, these very small works of art about five years ago. I used to have a gallery and studio um, 15 or 20 years ago, and then when I had my little ones, I took a, what I call a baby break, and when my kids were old enough and I started thinking about getting back into the work world, I discovered um, miniature paintings being sold on eBay. So I started painting um, these small paintings and selling them on eBay about six years ago, I guess, and uh, had fantastic success with that and have been able to build a whole business that includes um, seven or eight different selling venues, ten different sites, and um, at least 4,000 art items, all based on those images. Okay. Um, and that, that's a, one of the questions I had is, is um, you know, there's the Etsy, there's Artfire, and um, eBay, and I see, I see that you're u- making use of a lot of those different things. What marketplace have you found that you've been getting the best results for and that has the most features for selling artwork? I would say um, of all the sites that I use, I'm having the most success on Etsy as far as uh, sales. Um, Artfire is still fairly new and has uh, wonderful features. I would say has more uh, user-friendly features than Etsy. eBay, I had um, phenomenal success originally, um, but I have, for a number of reasons, um, removed myself from eBay and only have about 10 items on there, where I used to have about uh, 2,000 items. Um, and I'm glad I did. I, I've branched out and sort of put my eggs in uh, many more baskets. Okay. Um, and I, I noticed you showcase a lot of your work on your on your blog that you're using. Yep. Um, have you found that like a helpful way to get the word out about what you're doing and kind of showcase some of your work? You know, I I feel really strongly about blogging actually. Um, Blogs, for a couple of reasons, blogs are free if uh, you work under Blogger, you know, hosted by Google. They're free, and the uh, Internet search engine optimization uh, is loves blogs because the information is always fresh, and so the search engines are always um, finding new uh, information. And so my blog has become probably my best um, source for traffic. So I feel really strongly about blogging. As long as it's something you do at least every few days, it's good quality information, um, I think blogging is highly effective. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. And you're right about the search engine optimization feature, and you know, you're know you creating that content on a regular basis, and Google really picks that up. Yep. Um, so I'd also just like to welcome uh, F-R-O-D-R-I-H-23 to the chat room. Thanks for coming in and listening. Um, I noticed on your blog, speaking about your blog, you have uh, you illustrated a children's book called uh, Moonlight Memoirs. Yeah. And I, lo- I was looking at that, and, and this was probably a while ago, right? Um, it was. It start- we started in 2007. Okay, and I like the cover. I think it has a very nice cover on the, uh, uh, on the book. Can you speak about that a little bit? You know, the book has a, a really wonderful story. It's really moving. Um, in 2007, this young lady found my art on eBay. And I actually didn't know how young... She was 13 at the time. I didn't know her age. And we started emailing back and forth about possibly illustrating a book. Well, um, it turned out that she was very young, but very committed to getting this book illustrated. And over the course of three years, uh, all via emails back and forth, we created this wonderful um, uh, 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 picture book, story book, Moonlight Memoirs. And then I finally got to meet her after the book was published. Um, since we've published the book, uh, we've won six awards on the book. It's, it's in her, its second printing, 
And uh, Maggie May Lewis is uh, adopted from China. She's uh, re- interesting in a couple different for a couple different reasons. She's 13 when she wrote this book. She's adopted as a one-year-old from China, and completely homeschooled. So it's it's been um, just a real joy the whole process. I'm really proud of all of us, um, and the fact that we've won six awards and you know now into our second printing. It's, it's been really a, a, a pleasure. That's great. Well, congratulations on Thank you know winning you. those awards. Um, I also see on your blog that you tend to you are pointing to like some different social networks. You have you're pointing to your Twitter, your Facebook, LinkedIn, as well as some YouTube, um, which I think is great. And I think a lot of websites should have that where they're pointing to their social networks from the website and vice versa. Are those the four major channels that you kind of uh, focus your time on? Those are the four major channels. Now I'm I'm strongest on Twitter. I'm fairly new to Facebook in terms of business, and LinkedIn uh, also fairly new. And YouTube, I'm brand new uh, at YouTube. Um, Twitter has been my most, um, I'm most comfortable with Twitter um, and have had just fantastic results, Um, I think mostly because I really enjoy being there. And on YouTube, uh, it's kind of fun. My teenage son and I created our first, couple of videos. He he playing his guitar as my background music for a um, step-by-step work in process of my art. It was really a blast, and I hope to do a lot more of those. Yeah, that's good, because, uh, you know, video is a very good, uh, rich content to be able to have. It's, you know, it is quick to produce once you kind of get down the the, the workflow of producing video. Um And I know you talked about Twitter. I noticed you do have a very good following on Twitter. You're very interactive, and... Um, what do you think has uh, been the most important thing that's helped you achieve such a following on Twitter and make it such a useful tool? Well, like I mentioned a, a, a moment ago, I think probably the, the most important thing is that I really enjoy. I mean, I really enjoy being on Twitter. I tweet um, a couple hours in the morning and a couple hours in the evening, and it's uh, it's relaxing for me to do that. And I was going to mention I actually sort of have a formula for six, I, what I believe is success on Twitter once you have a number of followers, and that is to do about 40% of your tweeting should inspire or uplift people or help people. About 30% should be where you're actually interacting and, you know, having a conversation with people. 20% retweeting or helping other people, you know, redoing what their tweet is. And at very most, 10% self-promotion. So to me, that that is the kind of the perfect formula. People do not want to read an ongoing stream of self-promotion. Um, so, uh, and that's been I, I I rarely actually even look at the number of followers that I have, except when it hits, you know, another thousand. It's kind of exciting when it gets up over eight thousand and so on. But um, Twitter has been a real a real pleasure for me. Yeah, and I think that's really important is enjoying it and making it something that. Um, you know, you want to do. And, like, some people may find that in Facebook. Some people may find that with Twitter. Some people will be better with video. But I think that is important to have that passion and really be, you know, wanting to use the tool. Exactly. And it should not, I think it, you're right. I think you're right about It should be a job, yeah. It shouldn't be a chore, I think, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think you're right about the percentages of, like, self-promotion versus... Um, you know, promoting others, inspiring, interacting, retweeting. That is very important. And, you know, it is something of an art form to be able to get that right. And I have noticed that you, you're you doing that pretty pretty well with, like, promoting others. And, you know, I mean, you do also have to get the word out about yourself. I mean, this is a tool that you can use to market and, and uh, market yourself. And But I think you're right. If you um, promote others and inspire people... Um, that's going to come back to you in the form of people putting more weight on your message that you're putting exactly. out there. Yep, exactly. Um, and I, I did notice that you do a race for the critters. Um, <laughs> that that sounded pretty interesting. I'm a big animal lover, so I just could you maybe tell people about that? I would love to. That's a, a project that was near and dear to my heart, and such a, a such a joy, such a success. Um, to begin with, I'm the co-leader of a group called Art for Critters. We've been around for about, uh, I guess, about eight years now. It's a group of 35 or so artists from around the world who donate a portion of our art sales to animal charities. 
So this race, how it started was um, my mother passed away in February. And I have been a runner off and on for years. I was, and I used my running as a way to, you know, process the sadness and the grief and so on. And um, I was out running one morning after my mother passed, and I was just suddenly hit with this sense of gratitude. You know, I was grateful that I could still be running at age 51, that, um, you know, that I had so many uh, loved family around me and so on. And I, I felt this urge to kind of give back. So I decided, well, why don't I see if I can get people to sponsor me and raise and aim for a race, a 10K, which is 6.2 miles, and raise money for animal charities. So I really was shocked and delighted with the success. Over the course of six months, I um, was able to train enough to finish um, second in my class for a 6.2-mile race. I hadn't raced for, like, 35 years, <laughs> and uh, raised $1,500 for animal charity. So it was, um, it was just a real joy, and I'm going to do it again in May. Yes, that's what I was going to ask you about, because I looked on your uh, website, and you had the, some information about the uh, other one, the, ne- the next one that's coming up. Yep, yep. And, you know, most of, I would say, if you go to my website and you look at the race, the original race page, I have listed all the people that donated money, and I would say really about 80% or more of the donations came right off Twitter. So, um, you know, that's an example of how your interaction on Twitter and, and your presence there can really be of great value. Yeah, that's great. Um, are there, uh, you talked a little bit, how can, how can people find more information about that, about your Race for Critters and the future one that's coming up if they're interested in donating? I think probably the best way to find any uh, any of my sites or any information about me would be put my name, Melody Lee, L-E-A, Lamb, as in small sheep, into your internet search. Or you can go to my website, which is www.melodyleelamb.com. And you can probably find just about anything that you need about the race, about my art, um, upcoming uh, books, and so on on those sites. Okay, and are there any like future projects you're working on, like any kind of uh, special paintings or artwork that maybe you're yeah. currently working on? Okay, I, I just finished kind of an interesting one. I, you know, like I said, I've been painting miniatures for about five years, almost exclusively, but I was just commissioned to do a very large, um, intricate painting for a um, someone I met again on Twitter, um, and I just it was a, we had kind of a tight deadline, and I just finished that um, this morning and overnighted it. it I, I put in a couple um, all-nighters on it. <laughs> <laughs> so I just finished that big commission, and I've got several small um, commissions in the work, and then a new children's book also um, lined up. That's great. And, yeah. you know, I would, I would definitely recommend anybody that's listening to, to check out your website and uh, your Twitter stream. So your website, again, is MelodyLeeLamb.com, right? Yep. And uh, Twitter, you're the, it's the same name, right? Same name. And if you use that name, pretty much, you know, my uh, YouTube is that name, LinkedIn is that name, um, mm-hmm. all my sites are, if you, and if you add that name to search, the search, and then you can kind of go through and decide which site, my blog or my website, or my, I have a handful of other blogs and selling venues and so on. Yeah, and that's a that's a good tip right there for anybody that's uh, starting to get into using the different social networks is try to use the same name if possible. Exactly. So, that way, if somebody wants to find you, they'll say, oh, well, she, she's uh, this username on Twitter. She's probably Melody Lee Lamb on Facebook or whatever other, uh, you know, site that they happen to be using. So, um, and let's see. And they're also asking me to type that into the chat room, so I'm going to type that right now into the chat room. Okay, so I typed that into the chat room too so people can see that. And uh, Melody, thanks for for coming to the show. I appreciate you doing the interview. It was my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Hey, you're welcome. You feel free to to hang hang out and listen if you want to, or uh, if not, I'll be talking to you on Twitter. Very good. Thanks, Chris. Have a good night. All right.